What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Portigo and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here and you like what you see, consider subscribing. In today's video, we're gonna be doing another cinematography lighting breakdown, but this one's gonna be a tiny bit different than what we're usually doing. Instead of doing something that I shot or that I was a part of, we're actually gonna be taking a look at something that was done off in Hollywood with big budgets and analyzing exactly how the shots are done and all the elements that go into each of them. And this is gonna be broken up into three different parts. The first part, which is the video you're watching right now, is where we're gonna go through all of the shots that we're gonna look at and break them down individually to see what we have to work with and what we're trying to replicate. In part two, it's gonna be us going on set and trying to recreate these shots using the knowledge that we found by analyzing the footage and seeing what gear we can actually use to make this happen on more of a budget. And then in part three, we're gonna break down those shots like we do with our normal cinematography lighting breakdowns and show you exactly what we used and how we got the shots at the end. If you wanna check out either of those videos, those are gonna be linked to in the description down below and at the end of this video. So without further ado, let's jump into this one, taking a look at the scene that we're gonna break down from Game of Thrones. What are you doing in Winterfell? Or did you read every book in the Citadel already? What's wrong? Gilly? Is she alright? She's got a little son. Don't you know? So watching this scene back again and going through some of the blocking, we start with a dolly in over to our main talent, John, who blows out a candle and then looks up at a statue as we do a rack focus. He then steps back from the candles and we cut to an over the shoulder shot of the statue, sort of the down perspective on John. Then we're gonna switch over and do an OTS of John's shoulder looking up at the statue. As he hears a sound, he's gonna turn around, look back and then walk towards that sound. And then we're gonna to jump to a part later in the scene where John is having a conversation with Samwell, starting with this over the shoulder shot of Samwell looking at John. And then we're going to go to the OTS of John looking at Samwell and then a two shot of the both of them. So those are going to be the six shots we're going to take a look at right now. Okay, so let's start off with the first shot in the scene where we dolly into our main talent standing in front of the candles. Now, when I start to analyze these and break them down to figure out all of the different lighting elements, there's really four things that I'm going to focus on. The first one is going to be the light sources. Now, this is going to be looking at all of the different light sources in the scene whether they are practical, so they're on camera, or if they're gonna be off camera lights and sort of where they're located and how they're actually affecting the shot. The next thing is gonna be the direction of light. Now this is gonna be taking all of the light sources that we've found and figuring out where the light is actually casting and what's being illuminated by each source in the scene. The third one, which is pretty easy, is the color temperature of all of these different light sources. And then the next thing is gonna be the exposure or brightness levels of each of these individual light sources. So let's break down each four of these in this first shot. So in the bottom left corner here, we have three candles, and this is going to be our key light or main light for the scene. In the background here, we also have some candles that are sort of in the background just as some bokeh add, to add a little bit of depth to the scene. And then there's one more light that's hitting our subject back here and we're getting a nice little rim on the statue in the background, which you see once we actually rack focus to it. So our main light in the source is gonna be those three candles, and that's gonna be giving us exposure onto our talent's face. We have a really nice profile shot of our talent here as it fades off into this darkness on the backside, but those candles are right in front of him, giving him a good exposure on his face, as well as this one that he's holding, which he blows out shortly after. The other one in the background is just that bokeh. I don't believe this is actually lighting anything up. I think it might be motivated to light up the statue, but these candles are definitely too dim and too far away to be lighting up that statue. So I really just have them as practical bokeh background elements. Um, and then the last one is that one on the statue, which is definitely coming in from camera right and giving us that nice edge on our subject. Now basically all of these are motivated off of the candlelight. So I'm gonna say the color temperature for the whole scene and all of the lights in this scene is probably around 2800 Kelvin. 
and the camera might be white balanced to something around 4000 Kelvin, maybe a little bit higher depending on how warm you want those candles to look. And then the last thing that we're going to look at is the exposure of all these lights. And to do this, I have a plugin called Tom's False Color, and that gives me false color in Premiere so I can analyze and look at footage like this. If you want to check it out, I'll throw a link to it right up here. Um, I have another video sort of explaining the whole process and how to actually use it. So starting off with the brightest things in the scene, it's going to be those flames that are coming from the candles, and those are going to be in the 90-ish IRE range, maybe 85, 90 IRE. We can tell they're not clipping because there's no reds in there like you can see at the very tip. The next brightest thing is going to be the tops of the candles. So we're seeing those sort of in that green to pink range. So probably 40 to maybe 60 IRE for some of that areas. And that's going to be the candles. And then our subject's face over here, while he has this flame up, we are getting some of those brighter areas like on his lips and on his nose. And those are probably right around in the 30 IRE. But a majority of his face is definitely falling in the like 10 to 20 range for his exposure. Outside of that, everything else is falling off quite a bit and is probably close to that like 5 IRE range. So overall, we have a really dark exposure here with nothing really coming over that 30 IRE mark. The next shot we're going to take a look at is where John steps back from the statue and looks up at it. And we're doing an OTS of the statue looking down on John. So we're a little bit higher with our camera now. As far as the lighting, there's really only one light source that I can tell in this shot. And it's coming from camera right and hitting our subject and giving us some really nice fall off from the exposed side of his face into darkness on the left side. So really splitting him right down the middle. This is also staying with that same color temperature of 2800 Kelvin to match those candle lights because that's what we're motivating off of. If you look a little bit closer to, you can almost see a little edge or rim light on the statue, which gives a little more separation from the darkness of the background and that foreground element. So we'll take a look at that as well, but I'm not exactly sure what direction it's coming from. It might be coming from right in front and just hitting that little bit of edge. Now let's take a look at the exposure levels. Uh, if you look on the statue, you can see that edge that I was sort of talking about that's a little bit brighter than the rest of it, as well as up here on the side of his head. For John's exposure on his key light and on like the side of his body, we're pretty much staying in that like 15 to 20 IRE range. Nothing is really coming above that and everything else really falls almost in that like five IRE range, pretty dark right into these corners and behind him. You can't really see anything else except for his left side. Going on to the third shot, we're going to be doing an OTS of John looking up at the statue. Now for our key light, we can definitely tell that it's coming in from camera left. Again, there's nothing in the shot, no practicals that we're able to see. If you look in his eye light, this is a huge giveaway of what sort of source that they're using. You have this really tall, soft looking source. So my guess is they have some sort of soft box just off of camera left that's giving us this nice little eye light and nice edge along his face. You can't really see it in this right now, uh, but there's also some light in the background on the statue, which you'll be able to see once we jump into that false color. Again, keeping it consistent throughout all of these, this color is going to be about 2800 Kelvin because it's motivated off of that candle light. Looking at the exposure here, a majority of this image is dropping down into that under 10 IRE, probably in that like five IRE range. Uh, if you look at the, the highlight along his face and the bridge of his nose, sort of down the side of his face and onto his jacket, that area is going to be again in that 15 to 20 IRE range. Uh, along his face, he does have a little bit brighter areas that are probably coming up into the 30, like right along his cheekbone and in his eye and that highlight in his eye. But again, for the most part, this is a super dark image staying under 30 IRE for the entire shot. Going on to our fourth shot where John and Sam are finally talking. We're doing an OTS of Sam looking at John. And here we're actually starting to add in a little bit of color as well. But before I get into that, let's talk about the key light. Definitely coming from camera right and hitting our subject John here. We're getting some nice little eyelights. And they are a little bit lower in his eye. So the light, I have a feeling, is going to be coming a little bit lower. Again, to motivate off where those candles would actually be. They're not going to be up above him. They're going to be down below, giving him some up light. Also, with a little bit of Rembrandt lighting, we're getting some crossing over his nose onto his cheek on the right side. 
And then again, going down his body, just lighting up his left side. We're also getting a nice little edge on Sam here to separate him from the background and maybe a little bit of backlight here as well. Now, the really interesting thing about this one is as for our key light, we're keeping that 2800 Kelvin, again, motivating off of those candle lights, but we're also seeing some daylight introduced. Here's a quick tip. If you throw on an exposure level and you can brighten it up, you're gonna be able to see really quickly what's happening in the scene if you can. Obviously, it makes it look terrible um, and super posturized, but you can start to see some of those colors. So on the left side of John's face here, we're actually getting some blue light coming in from the uh, daylight in the background, as well as having some blue back here and some blue in between them. So adding in some of that daylight and maybe at a like seven or 8,000 Kelvin. And that's just splashed on the background with a little bit hitting the side of John's face, as well as Sam's over on the right side. And we'll see this a little more when we switch over to Sam's OTS in the next shot. But before we skip on, let's look at the exposure levels. Again, keeping it consistent throughout the entire thing. We're staying in that 15 to 20 IRE range. And then the rest of the image falling off into that five-ish IRE. Really low, super underexposed for what you'd normally have it at. So now flipping around to the other OTS of John looking at Samwell. And the first place I like to look, if you can, is right in the eyes. This is going to give a good indication of where all the different light sources are in the scene if they're in front of your talent. So for our key light, I can definitely tell that it's coming from the left just because of the side of his face that's being lit up. But also in his eye light, it's at the bottom of his right eye. That means that the source is going to be a little bit lower and coming up into his face. His eyes also have some other reflections in them, two of them in the top right. And my guess is that's going to be the daylight source that's coming in and hitting the side of John's face as well as the fill side of Samwell's face. As for other sources, you also have this candle in the background, uh, just giving some warm light on the cave walls just to add a little bit of depth. They've also done some really cool stuff with the color to help add that depth in as well. So if we go over on the right side here, you can see we're having that really nice warm color. If we go into his face, you're gonna see it's a little bit cooler, dark kind of bluish muddy green, back to his face, which is a warm color, and then over on to John's face, which again is that cooler color. So you're getting this back and forth between warm, cold, warm, cold, and it really adds some depth using those different color temperatures. Jumping over to the exposure shot, we're gonna have, again, a very similar consistent look across all of these with our key lights being around that like 20 IRE. The candle in the background putting off about 30 IRE, which makes sense to give a little bit of separation between uh, Sam and the background with his dark clothes here. So we get a nice sort of silhouette. And then the rest of the image falling into that five IRE range or at least under 10 to keep it really, really dark and feeling like it was only lit by those candles. And then finally, jumping into our last shot, this is gonna be, again, very similar. So having color temperatures of 2800 Kelvin throughout, we have a light coming from the back, giving Sam a nice edge, motivated by probably these candles in the background or possibly some other candles off to the other side. A little bit of an edge on John right here, going down his face and onto his arm. And then we also have some candles in the background just adding as background elements. Now this one, they did something a little bit different. They've actually sort of inverted what they're exposing for. So in the background here, the background is what's being exposed and then they're allowing the talent to fall off into silhouette. If we jump over to the false color shot, so our talent now is basically falling under that five IRE range. And then our background now right behind them and underneath the arm here, even over onto the right side where these candles are, is falling into that 20 IRE range, giving us the exposure and the separation that we need from our subjects and our backgrounds. So that's basically it for analyzing these six shots and figuring out what sort of exposure levels we need. Now let's jump into the studio and see what gear we can use to recreate these shots. If you wanna check out part two where we go on set and actually try to recreate this shot using budget filmmaking tools, I'm gonna to leave a link right up here as well as in the description below. So definitely go and check those out. If you have any questions about how we analyze this footage or if you wanna see more of these videos, definitely let me know by leaving a comment down below 
hit that like button as well and subscribe for new videos every single week. And I'll see you in the next one.